we will have a moment of silence um, to prepare our hearts for worship. And we'll begin with our call to worship in our bulletin. That's the, the only thing that you'll need today. And your responses are in the, in the heavy print. The Lord is trustworthy and true. The Lord upholds all who are falling. The Lord is just in all ways. The Lord is close to everyone who calls upon God. Amen. Creator, you made all people of every land. It's our responsibility to give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land that we're upon. We give thanks to the Shwetmik and the Enthlakatan, first people of this land. We offer our respect to those ancestors who may be interred in this land. We are also thankful for the gifts of the people of this land. Creator, let us be of good mind to reconcile the mistreatment of this land and to those who have been displaced. With thankful and respectful hearts, we pray in your name, your Son, the Peacemaker, and the Sacred Spirit. Amen. Creator, we give you thanks for all you are and all you bring to us for our visit within your creation. In Jesus, you place the gospel in the center of this sacred circle through which all of creation is related. You show us the way to live a generous and compassionate life. Give us your strength to live together with respect and commitment as we grow in your spirit, for you are God now and forever. Amen. And our hymns this morning are from the More Voices. So our first one is Creator God, You Gave Us Life, number 27. which is in the bulletin. Together we say, Lord God, you heap your love upon us like a parent providing for their family's needs. Forgive us when we treat your generosity as our right or hold on to it possessively. 
Forgive us that we have kept what we have to ourselves rather than offering it up to you that you might feed and sustain others. Forgive us that we have failed to be concerned about the waste that our society produces. Forgive us when we have wanted more for ourselves at the cost of another. We are sorry, Lord, and in need of your renewing grace. As we gather now to worship you, fill us with anticipation of your word to us. Strengthen us for service. Feed and renew us that we might share in your purpose in giving life to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. With a love that surpasses knowledge, Christ comes to us saying, Trust in me. Do not be afraid. Though what we have to offer is our broken selves, God brings forth an abundance of mercy beyond our imagining. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Creator God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way toward justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. And please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from Second Kings. Now in our first reading, it is from Kings, where the prophet Elijah receives a bag of grain and twenty barley loaves. With that, he instructs his, his servant to feed one hundred people and the servant, although uncertain at first, obeys. After everyone is fed, there is food left over. And the reading says, A man from Baal Shalashan, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, twenty loaves of barley and a fresh ears of corn in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, and they ate and had some left, according to the word of God. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the people. Thanks be to God. In today's psalm, God's people bless God and give thanks, telling everyone about God's power, glory, and everlasting reign. Because God is trustworthy and supports, provides for, and rescues all who call out to God. I'm reading Psalm 145, 10 to 19. All your work shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. 
and the prayer. Creator God, give us grace to know you more and more, that knowing we may love and loving we may praise, that the whole world may hear your name and worship you. Through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. The second uh, lesson is from <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he prays for the Ephesian Christians, asking God, who knows all people, to strengthen them, live in them, enable them to grasp the height, depth, and breadth of God's love. Then Paul celebrates God who can do far more than we can think or even imagine. So Ephesians 3, chapter 3, verses uh, 14 to 21. <clears throat> Pardon me. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And our gradual hymn is number 171 in More Voices. Christ has no body now but yours. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands but yours Here on this earth Yours is the work To serve with the joy of compassion No hands but yours To heal the wounded world No hands but yours To serve touch but yours to bind the broken hope of the people of God. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands but yours. Here on this earth yours is the work to serve
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. <clears throat> when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And please be seated. Today, we hear again the story of Jesus feeding 5,000 people. And in those days, that meant the men. They only counted the men. This story is in all four of our Gospels and is described as a miracle and as a sign. John is telling us that it's pointing beyond the fact of the feeding to something very important about Jesus and about the nature of God. He's saying, don't get hung up on the feeding. Look at what it points to. Traditionally, people have often thought that Jesus did some kind of magic God trick with the five loaves and two fish and turned them into lots more bread and fish. And then someone said, no, most Jewish people carried food with them. What Jesus did was somehow encourage people to share their food. And people get upset because they think it denies that Jesus has any real power. Andrew Pryor says, If you are a Jewish person of Jesus' time, 
The story of sitting on the green grass in groups of hundreds and fifties and being fed enough with enough food left over sounds like the Messiah has come and brought us heaven on earth. It sounds like that time people long for when life on earth will be good and the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them, a prophecy from Isaiah. The story of the feeding of 5,000 doesn't sound like that to us. It just sounds like an impossible story. But that's a cultural thing. Jesus' sign was <clears throat> excuse me, much clearer to the people there. We can't see it because we've not been raised and steeped in the Jewish culture. In our contemporary culture, we spend way too much time and energy arguing about how something happened when the important question is why this story is remembered by the early Christ followers and has been used as a teaching instrument ever since. Herbert O'Driscoll tells us, our task is not to worry about how it happened, that there was food to spare, because we will never know. Our task is to hear and see what is being communicated to us. Many things are being taught. The first and most important is that God can take very little and make much of it. Our example is of the generosity and faith of one small boy, which led to greater sharing and mutual care for the entire group. It's a song the scriptures sing to us again and again. The second thing we learn is that God uses the ordinary to bring about the extraordinary. When we recall who Jesus' disciples were and who we are as witnesses to teach others about the breadth and depth of God's love for God's creation, it strengthens our faith and empowers us to deeper action. The third thing being taught is that the simple gift of a child can be used by God as much as the great gift of a king or a queen. The fourth is that God acts through the real and the tangible and the simplicities of creation to come to us again and again through sacrament. We've been talking about food and hunger, and we know that getting to heaven on earth, getting to a time when everyone has enough to eat, seems impossible for us. We already have enough food, but we simply can't get ourselves in a place to love each other enough to let everyone live. We are trapped in our culture, and if we're honest, we really don't want to do things too much differently. What this story of Jesus' feeding is telling us is that if we will follow Jesus, if we're willing to pay the cost of living like him, it will put us on track to discover that the impossible does happen. That will be a place where there is food and life for everyone. What happens to our faith if we don't make Jesus into a magical miracle worker? Is your faith grounded in the multiplication of loaves that lasted for a few hours and left people hungry again? Or is your faith grounded in the way of Jesus that will save the world from us and turn us into wholly connected to God beings? If we want something that's hard to believe in, forget the magical multiplication of loaves and fishes. Can it really be that our little changes here will be part of the changing of the world into something that was our Creator's original intent? When we refuse to be abusive in the way we relate to each other, when we feed and house those who can't afford their own food and shelter, when we care for those we see as other and those who challenge us, when we give financially to those encountering disaster and distress. This is changing the way the world works. Now that may be hard to believe. That's like saying a small boy giving away his lunch can feed thousands of people and show them what heaven on earth will be like. Yet 
that is all we have. It's where everything starts. Our faith walk is to learn to trust in God's grace and mercy and to learn to live out of that faith in every choice, every decision, and every moment. Faith in God's ways and God's gracious presence may sound naive and impractical, but when we take the risk and live as faithful followers of Christ, we discover that the principles of God really are the best way to live. In all our readings today, we are offered a vision of God's grace and presence that calls to the grace and compassion within us. We know what happens when we turn our backs on faithfulness, integrity, and self-restraint. We're challenged to believe that generosity and trust really can help us to enjoy shared abundance and navigate the storms that we will inevitably face. Paul's words to the Gentile church in Ephesus emphasizes <clears throat> that diversity of gifts is wonderful and that we are bound together as one body, Christ's body. For the fruit of our lives, our righteousness, justice, kindness, compassion, joy, gentleness, all of these are witnesses to our unity in Christ, that we are rooted in God and not in the ways of the world. Paul reminds the believers of God's provision and grace and prays that they may learn to grasp how abundant God's love is and that they allow this knowledge to strengthen and open them to God's life within them. That's what I'd like each of you to really grasp. So I'll read those beautiful words again, this time from Walking the Good Road, which is the First Nations version of the New Testament and Ephesians. So it says, This is the reason I bow down on my knees and humble myself before the Father above, from whom all families, clans, and tribes in this world and in the world above are named. This is my prayer for you, that from the great treasures of his beauty, Creator will gift you with the Spirit's mighty power and strengthen you in your inner being. In this way, the Chosen One will make His home in your heart. I pray that as you trust in Him, your roots will go deep into the soil of His great love and that from these roots you will draw the strength and courage needed to walk this sacred path together with all His holy people. This path of love is higher than the stars, deeper than the great waters, wider than the sky. Yes, this love comes from and reaches to all the directions. Paul continues, I pray that you will feel how deep the Chosen One's great love is, a love that goes beyond our small and weak ways of thinking. This love fills us with the Great Spirit, the One who fills all things. I am praying to the Maker of life, who by his great power working in us can do far more than what we ask for, more than our small minds can imagine. May his sacred family and the chosen one bring honor to him across all generations to the time beyond the end of all days. May it be so. Amen. And for our statement of faith, We'll use the one from Francis Somerville again because it's such beautiful words. Together we say, I believe in God, creator of the universe, dwelling forever beyond time and space. I believe in Jesus the Christ, who came to live amongst us and let us see what God is like. I believe in the Holy Spirit, sent by God through Jesus to be our guide and comforter. Therefore, I believe in love, in hope, compassion, joy, and faith, forgiveness, and eternal life. Amen. And take whichever position is most conducive to your prayers. 
And as we pray this morning, let us know that the Christ, uh, let's allow the Christ to dwell in our hearts through faith as we are rooted and grounded in love. Loving God, you are our creator and sustainer. You are the source of all abundance. And you lovingly satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. And so we look to you always, but especially whenever we are in need. And as we do so, we trust in your love and your abundant goodness that is there for each person. And as the five loaves and the two fish fed the crowd, we ask that you would again fill those who are empty this day. Pour out your spirit on all who hunger and thirst. And we pray for the many, the many around the world that are physically hungry, whose stomachs are empty, and think especially of the people who are facing critical food shortages for whatever reason. And may we move forward in a world that allows all to be fed. And Lord, in your mercy, your loving spirit flows out to fill them now. And Almighty God, we pray with those who are affected by the wildfires, including our own community, and we just know that you are with us, that you are protecting us, and that you are helping us to do whatever is appropriate. Give us the vision to see the end of these fires and give us the strength to walk in your in faith, in faith in you that there is an answer that is beginning to come right now. We pray with all of those who have lost their homes and businesses, those that have been forced out of their homes either to evacuate or because the homes are lost. We pray with all of those who are in danger of from the fires. And we especially remember Lois and Ken because their property is located close to the fire line and we're just knowing that they are safe. We know they're safe and we're just seeing their property protected. We pray for all of those who are in, involved in fighting the fires or helping in, in any other way as well as those who are continuing to fight the COVID-19. So thank you, God, that you are with us because these times are trying for all of us. So thank you for your presence with us. We especially pray with Spence's Bridge this morning and that area, especially along the Nicola River, that they may be protected and strengthened by the power of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, your loving spirit flows out to fill them and protect them now. And we pray for those who are empty emotionally, who are lonely and long for companionship and love, those that are caught in the grip of depression or overwhelmed with grief. We especially pray with Simone and the family at Rusty's passing. We've been praying with him for a long time and we see him being blessed on his way and the family and all families who are grieving are sustained by your love and your comfort. And Lord, in your mercy, your loving spirit flows out to fill them. And we pr pray also with those who are emotionally empty and troubled but don't know where to turn that your presence may help them to fill that longing that's within them. May they find purpose and meaning 
because of your help and your guidance. And may each know the love of Christ and be filled by that love. And we ask that you give to your church, O oh God, the power to comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ. And that we share that love in our communities, in our families, We pray that your power is at work within us that may it help to accomplish abundantly far, far more than we can ask or imagine. We know that for ourselves individually and collectively as well, that we can do more than we can ask and imagine through your, through your help, your strength, your power, and our faith. And for this knowing this morning, May we experience the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that we may be filled with the fullness of God. As we say, Amen. Creator, you bless us with many good gifts returned to you from your creation. Feed us with the bread of life, your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have the many blessings which earth has given and human hands have made. It becomes for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. God the Creator is here. God's Spirit is with us. And as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, you are our leader and you are the son of the creator. Today we became your children and today we became your grandchildren. We will live as you have taught us. We will follow your commandments. Watch over us. Speak to us from the trees, from the sagebrush and grass, from the breeze, from the passing rain, from the passing thunder and the deep water. Before us there is beauty. Behind us there is beauty. Allow us to walk a long life in happiness, completed in beauty. Amen. And our doxology. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And our blessing. Go out into the world. Seek God and the wisdom of God. Return to your Creator whenever you leave the path. And trust whatever you have to Christ. For with the Christ there will always be more than enough. And may Creator God strengthen you in your inner beings. May Jesus the Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, and may the Holy Spirit plant your roots deeply in the abundant richness of God's love. Amen. And our closing hymn, sent out in Jesus' name, number 212. Here we go. Sent out in Jesus' name.
flock and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.
and our dismissal. Well, once again, it was wonderful. Let us depart in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh,